guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I wanted to talk about Photo Mirage, um, which is the free uh, Cinemagraph type of software that comes bundled with PaintShop Pro 2019 Ultimate. So it comes with it. It's the Express version. I haven't used the full version. I've only used the Express version and it kind of has some quirks to it. Uh, but it can produce some pretty cool looking cinema graphs with just photos. So no video. This is just taking a photo you've already uh, captured, but adding animation to it. It has some limitations and it definitely works better on some pictures than others. And those are the, some of the things that I want to go over. I'm not going to really just teach how to use it because there's already many videos on how to use it, but really just give my insights from my use of it up to this point. So as part of this demo, I'm going to use a grid as an example image just to show how the arrows and everything manipulate the uh, image. Uh, so to do that, though, I'm just going to show you a quick trick of how you can generate an image of a grid, essentially just using PaintShop Pro. So with PaintShop Pro open, essentially you can just create a new image, and I just happen to pick one that's HD 1920 by 1080, and set the background to transparent. What this does, as if you've used PaintShop Pro and layers at all, you'll see that it generates an image with the checkerboard, and the checkerboard represents transparency. So if we just take this image that it generates and save it, um, you can't save it in PaintShop Pro because it's going to treat it as just fully transparent, but if you use something like Microsoft Snip Tool and just capture that image as it is and save it, now you have a grid image you can work with, and you can use this to test things in PaintShop Pro or like I'm about to do in other software like Photo Mirage. Okay, so here we have Photo Mirage open with our grid image already loaded. And um, creating motion is all about just drawing the arrows that indicate where the image should move and then setting anchor points. Now, looking at our grid, if we just draw a single, single arrow and then press play, this is the effect that you see. So, so what does this indicate to us? That basically, at a minimum, any given image that you work with, this type of movement that you see here where it's just dragging all the pixels to the left, um, but still in sort of like a diamond pattern, this diamond pattern is created by the fact that at a minimum, Photo Mirage treats any image like it has anchor points at every corner. So if I add an anchor point at every corner and hit play, what you'll notice is that it really makes no difference, and it's because this is essentially the base set of anchor points that are required in every image, and so if you're going to do any kind of motion, expect that those are going to be there. The next point I want to cover about motion is that the length of the arrow matters, that if you draw a small arrow versus a large arrow, it's going to affect speed. So with our short arrow here and our large arrow here, what you can see in terms of how this gets affected is there's a much more dramatic change where the big arrow is and a much smaller change where the small arrow is. So now if we look at this image, this test image of a fountain where I have it set up for the water to kind of flow rather slowly um, out of the fountain mouth, uh, I, what you'll see is that the arrow length has to be pretty short, but primarily because I'm trying to make it bend along a certain path. So the point I'm trying to make about arrow length and geometry is essentially that you might find yourself in a situation where even if you wanted to draw a much longer arrow to make the speed faster, you may be limited by the geometry of how you want the thing to move. So in this case, with the speed being as fast as it possibly can, but with the fact that I needed to bend it, um, it still is going to have a fairly slow effect. Now, you could uh, increase this post once you generate a video of this, compress the time and make it flow faster, but then you're going to have a much shorter clip, which means that recoil animation where it fades back into the beginning is going to be happening constantly rather than just at a timed interval. Now, one important point to note um, that I found with creating cinema graphs with Photo Mirage is that it's just as much important what types of images you choose to work with 
um, as is understanding the technical parts of creating the nodes and drawing the lines. That um, the photo mirage, because of the fact that it has that recoil animation where that essentially it's fading back into the image that it started with, if you don't have a texture or if it's not like something like water that can blend into itself nicely, it's going to have a very um artificial effect like like the 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 recoil um fade is just going to be so obvious that it's really going to take away from uh the fluidity of how it looks or maybe the realism in a, in a sense so something like a big ocean scene um it works really well it it almost seems like it could be a realistic scene like that the water really is just flowing and because it blends well into itself you can't even tell that it's cycling over and over again Compare that, though, to an ocean scene that happens to have a really harsh sunlight. Um, since there's very well-defined contrast lines, that recoil effect, that fade, um, becomes so obvious that it's just it, it's almost distracting to watch. Another example of good water that blends into itself is this image of the surfer girl and just watching the water spreading away from uh, where she's cutting through because it's so there's so much texture and, and you kind of expect that water is just going to kind of you know be splashing constantly and and continually doing that that this has a very convincing effect similar with uh, the smoke in the magician show um, you can see that it's less convincing where the snow is falling all around him but at least at the top where it's um, the lights are kind of shining through the smoke it it has a very continuous and natural feel to it. One more example of it's still water, but because there's still too much contrast, any type of movement that shows up just doesn't look natural because the recoil effect just doesn't blend well and it just looks like a constant fading in and out rather than natural movement. Another reason why water works so well is because this type of motion that's created by photo mirage is really kind of like a warping, melting kind of emotion. And so unless if you have a completely homogenous background, like total black or, um, you know, something that is very organic in nature to begin with, that it's not going to be very convincing if you just have your whole scene melting around you. It just it, it, it won't look right. Um, so. That's why you can't really just move anything. It has to be something that where both the subject and the background in and of itself can move together without really indicating to you that everything in the scene is warping. Uh, that's why fountains, for example, are another good spot to do it. But to make it look convincing, you just have to have your anchor points all in the right places. Some other things that I've kind of come across with placing arrows is that um, you don't you don't want to pull in from a corner, um, from outside, meaning the image, and into your image, because in doing so, you're going to have a situation where the edge of your image is actually going to be pulled into view. Um, but in, in the opposite way, um, if you don't want your lines to compress right at the edge, but you actually want the image to flow off, then you do, in fact, want your arrows to extend beyond the edge when you're going outward. Now one last thing that I want to cover um, is sort of an odd thing that it's not obvious in the program. I'm not sure if it was an oversight or if it's just an express feature, um, but there isn't a very intuitive way to save all of the work that you've done. Like if you've, if you've drawn all your arrows and you've added all your anchor points and masked out all the pieces you wanted to and you wanted to save all that work because maybe one day you'll want to revisit it and change it or you didn't finish and you want to come back and work on it some more when you look under file there isn't anything that says save the cpm file or whatever it is um, um you can export so you can make your mp4 which is the final video that you're going to have from this but there isn't an obvious way but what i stumbled across essentially is if you say new and were to open just another image uh, or a video, um, what it'll ask you is, do you want to save uh, what you've just created? And if you say yes, then it'll actually allow you to save it as a Corel Photo Mirage file. 
Now, if I were to open that again, if I were to go back and say recent files and open the CPM, then there it is again with all of my arrows and anchor points ready to be worked on once again. So that's it. Like I said, there's already a lot of photo mirage tutorials out there on how to use the basics of it and how to generate some um, motion in images. Um, most of the tips I gave were just to help with making it a little bit more convincing, more realistic, if that's what you're going for. If you're going for artistic, you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, but I hope this helped. I hope this helped you use the program a little bit better. Or if you're on the fence about whether you want to get the ultimate version, I hope this helps gives you a better idea of what Photo Mirage can do, what you can produce, and what kinds of images it can really work with. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, feel free to make any suggestions about topics you would like to see covered. Um, and if you want updates, go ahead and click subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.